The Godcast with Josh Fritz, where the scripture is honored, the lost are warned, the saints are fortified, false teachers are exposed, and the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. Here's your host, Josh Fritz. Welcome to this edition of the Godcast with Josh Fritz. That's a cold open. That's Pastor John MacArthur sharing his comments on those who plagiarize sermons. I want to take you to a scripture here as I start. I don't know how long I'm going to last here, but uh, right now I am currently at my local church. Uh, I am testing some equipment that's used on the road, Uh, perhaps a thumbnail uh, of this video, not video, but I guess of this podcast, because it's just audio only, um, the thumbnail will will show you what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I just want to take you to this passage that we all know that's very familiar to those who share the Word of God and teach, and uh, it's important to know uh, that we that we take it seriously. Uh, and know that we have uh, a responsibility uh, to know that the, the Scripture is very important. And here is something that um, we need to know. Let's see here. As I turn to this Scripture, I want you to know it's in James chapter 3. And there's another one that's coming to my mind right now. James chapter 3, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness for anyone excuse me for we all stumble in many ways and if anyone does not stumble in what he says he is a perfect man able to bridle his whole body if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us we guide their whole bodies as well look at the ships also they though they are so large and are driven by strong winds they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And he goes into talking about the tongue, and nobody can tame the tongue, and um, knowing it's a restless evil full of deadly poison. And uh, basically there in this first verse, is what I was looking at, chapter 3, verse 1, not many of you should become teachers. It's very important that we rightly divide the word of truth and if we don't do that uh, we're gonna we're going to mess up um, here uh, this is also in second Timothy 3 um, we're in the last days we need to know that and in the context of this it says but understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of God, appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions always learning but never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambus opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. Now here is the exhortation given by Paul to Timothy. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness. That's going to be the characteristic of a teacher. My persecutions and sufferings are out there sharing the gospel. That happened to me at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. 
which persecutions I endured, yet from all of them the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil people and impostors will go on from being bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned. That's another indicator, somebody that continues and perseveres. Continue in what you have learned. And I firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, we all know all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And what does it say in chapter 4, verse 1? I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to also those, to all, sorry, to also to all who have loved his appearing. So, very sobering words and encouraging and yet honest words from the Apostle Paul to Timothy, who would be uh, the pastor at the church at Ephesus. And uh, the blessing that we have from this section of Scripture is that it's in, it's in front of us. Uh, it's in front of us and to remind us that there's a seriousness when it comes to the, the teaching and the sharing of God's Word. Uh, there's no joke about it. And I know you heard a light moment there at the Master Seminary, which was happened to, today, which was hours ago. Uh, it's a Q&A uh, between Austin Duncan and Pastor John MacArthur. And he's addressing the, the plagiarism, uh, if not, not by name, it's definitely the Southern Baptist Convention leader, Ed Litton. And um, certainly that's a uh, it's been an issue because... Uh, it's highlighted on my channel here. Uh, I'll put the link in the description of this. I'll probably put this on YouTube as just audio only. But um, uh, there's a video where I have my daughter and I listening to Ed Litton and also listening to J.D. Greer, and their sermons sound the same. And I think Reformation Charlotte put that out as well. And it's documented, and he removed all of his sermons. And it's just it's sad because... Uh, here he is, a prominent leader who's refused to this hour to repent of that and has tried to justify it. And certainly when we're, when we're studying, we want to cite uh, who we are citing, whether it be uh, a theologian, whether it be a current pastor or an old church father, wh whatever, whatever the, the, whoever the person is. Um, uh, the, these are brothers that have taken the time to study, and their diligent work should not be uh, left on... Uh, unnoticed, it should be noted that they took their time and wrote down what they uh, were able to teach and what they were able to study and find out, and their ideas mean a lot. Spurgeon comes to mind. He's very wordy, and you can't go too far <laughs> when you're mentioning anything that he says, and you know it's not coming out of your mouth originally. And uh, just like this podcast right now, yes, I just read some scripture, I cited it for you, but here you're also hearing my opinion, my thoughts. So again, if someone were to come out and duplicate all the same words that I just shared with you, then yes, that would be a problem. So it's very common. And I just figured I'd stop and share that with you. And what do we do in that situation? Well, let's continue to listen to what John MacArthur uh, says in this Q&A. It's about a couple minutes long. We'll listen to a little bit more, and then I'll react to it as we listen to it. Um, I, I think become a showman at that point you're you're an actor you're you're playing a part you're playing a role um and the the word you know the one thing that 
expository preaching does that the that is uh, apart from the congregation is it sanctifies the pastor the relentless study of the word of god is how god sanctifies and protects the, the pastor so when, when you're just opening your ipad and reading somebody else's sermon you've never been exposed to the sanctifying work of the word to say nothing about the fact that you're playing a role and you're an actor you're not a true messenger from the lord um i think i think for many men in ministry there's a unwillingness to be disciplined at that point because being an expositor is work and it's relentless work because you got to keep doing it week after week after week after week and I want to stop there. He's right. I mean, you don't want to just read people's work and then that's it and not dig deep yourself. And there's a lot there when you dig into the Word of God. There's Sure, there's other people that have dug, but maybe you want to go further, looking up tenses and looking up words and definitions. and uh, You can only be so superficial, but there, there's a lot there in the text that uh, demands that you look at it. <clears throat> and... Uh, MacArthur is right, and it can be n noted to be lazy, and you don't want to be that way when it comes to the text. And obviously, there's uh, room for improvement. Uh, certainly, it, um, I've studied for a few things, and I thought, ah, this is not sufficient. I should, I shouldn't go forward with this. Or the, another question came to mind when I would look at something. I was like, ah, I'm really stuck in this text, and it really does. When you start contemplating and thinking and uh, meditating on the scripture that you're listening to, sometimes it's a heavy scripture that is convicting and you can't go any forward and you stop. And certainly that's chewing the scripture and mulling it over and going over in your mind until you know exactly what it's right. And I've, I've heard of pastors that have done that, that would not preach a, a certain text because they haven't gone through the, the scripture well enough uh, for that week in particular, and they went to another text that they already knew, and they picked up and got back on the horse, so to speak, the next week, and it was uh, it was worth that time to, to spend more time dedicated to that study. So I understand exactly what he's saying here, and uh, let's listen some more. But it's the most rewarding thing. It, it's There's no honesty in a man who does that. that, that, that that's There's no honesty. That's That's fraud, ministerial fraud. Um, that's not to say that you can't preach the same doctrine. and the, There's only one accurate interpretation of a text. But when your sentences are repeat exactly verbatim of somebody else, uh, it's, it's obvious that you, you took it from someone else. So you bypass the spiritual impact of the word. You bypass the divine work of the Lord in your heart. As the as you study the truth and and therefore you, you're a fraud you're a um, you're an echo not a voice and, and you've robbed yourself of, of your favorite part of preaching was which is that encounter with the text now the sanctifying work of the text and there's there has to be um, there I mean you know this because you you, you do this anybody who who does this like we do knows. There is so much underneath what we say, right? I can't imagine just reading the, the words of a sermon on the surface and not having eight or ten hours underneath that. Because, well, look, I, I would think, um, I don't know if anybody's calculated this, but I would think probably 80% of what I say in a sermon is, is not on any notes, right? How much of yours? I don't have very many notes. You don't have very many notes. And if you're Paul Twist, you have no notes. No notes. No, just... So there's a dynamic going on. There's a... There's a... There's a spirit-led search in your mind to pull up all the richness of what you've studied. This is, an, this is completely different than reading some script. Yeah. I talked to Ian Murray last week for the, for the pod... And a little plug for the pod. Uh, and he brought up that issue. He says the reason that you're still preaching and the reason people still listen to you 
is because you haven't gone to the recycle bin. You, you still insist on that fresh encounter. He, he talked about the vitality in your preaching mm. being still to this day because of that commitment. And, and I think that's something that, that we're all Can grateful for. Can you tell for. me more about what he said? I like it'll it. be, it'll be uh, episode eight of the MacArthur Center podcast okay. tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can hear it there, Mac. Uh, he doesn't get to hear it first. So it's, uh, but I, that, that was exactly what you're talking about, that kind of encounter. And, and so I think what I'd like to say is, is we're grateful for that, uh, John, because you've modeled that for us and your commitment to that. You don't dial in your sermons. You, you still do that hard work in the text. You still want to encounter the Christ of the word. And that's a, that's a strong model for, for all of the seminarians and for all of us who, who seek to honor the Lord alongside of you uh, to see your commitment to the word of God and that, that fresh and vital encounter with the word. Well, we don't, because you're an expositor of the scripture it doesn't mean you preach in a vacuum. You still have to connect with the world around you. Yeah. Uh, so you may be dealing with the same passage, but the circumstances in which the people you're speaking to exist may alter so that the, the emphasis of that passage is going to shift in a different direction. So um, being relevant will demand that even though you go back to a passage that you're not going to, you're not going to come up with a different interpretation of it but you're certainly going to come up with different implications and a different application because the dynamics have changed. That's interesting to say because, yes, what was relevant 30 years ago is not relevant today. Um, you have a, Of course, the world is waxing worse and worse. We know that. But as far as the culture is concerned, there are different aspects of the culture that are have gone down the tube, so to speak. And, yes, the application of any particular message that comes across the way, the text is always going to be the same. But the application could absolutely be shifting, and that's definitely true. And that's the challenge of exposition. And, and the truth is, from my standpoint, um, that's the best part. That's the part I love the most, is that process of discovery, of interacting with the Word of God. It is so exhilarating because, you know, we all would say we believe in analogia scriptura, the scripture is analogous to itself. But if you've been expositing the Word of God as long as I have for 60 years, every time I study the Bible, I see the genius of the divine mind, how everything perfectly connects. Oh, I can say amen to that. And I've only been on this earth for 36 <laughs> years, and uh, he's lived t nearly twice my life, and he uh, just said something that's definitely true. Every single time we bury, I'm uh, sorry, go and dig into the scripture, we definitely find the truths that we necessarily need for our souls, and he's amazed at it. So am I. I mean, that's absolutely true. It's, oh, it's, a, it's a treasure. And that, that is an exhilarating worship experience. I've, I've worshipped long hours before I ever get to Sunday morning. That's right. That's the best part. Uh, Mac, we, two-minute warning, uh, tell us what encourages you about the future of the master seminary oh and that's where this video cuts off but it's a blessing thank you for that video clip uh, by the way that's to the btwn guy who took that clip and shared it with me um yeah no every time we go into the scripture we come out of studying studying can be very uh, laborious you go in through there and you're you're taking a, a text apart but sometimes once you get started it's very hard to stop that's how I feel every single time that I've tried to study for even a lesson or even even in devotions with my children. Um, there's something there that drives you. And, of course, we know it's the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. And uh, the blessing of that is the fellowship that we have with God, uh, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a blessing. And um, certainly... Uh, Pastor John MacArthur gets it. He's been doing this for a long time. He's been studying for a long time. He knows the Word of God. And uh, I just, the highlight of that, if you want to take away a highlight from that clip, it's not the fact that he addresses Ed Litton. I mean, he does indirectly, the Southern Baptist president, uh, convention president. But the fact that he uh, shares his own heart regarding 
preaching and, and studying and getting up there week in and week out. And uh, certainly right now we know he's on vacation, but, you know, to appreciate your pastor. And certainly October is the month to appreciate your pastor and taking the time out to study. And uh, it's always a blessing. And speaking of pastors, I am hoping soon uh, to have him on the program it would be a great delight for you guys to hear what he has to say and have him on the program. And I am hoping very soon uh, to have that take place. You will get to meet him uh, via the podcast world. And uh, certainly anything that he says would be a great delight to have. With that said, take care. God bless. Thank you for listening.